So this is the test specimen that we'll be conducting the test on today. To turn on the machine, we flick on this green switch back here. The machine's now on and we can press the arrow keys to manually control the machine. So next we'll secure the test specimen in the brass collets. So we secure it using these pins. Um, the pins have little holes in them, so if you want to put cotter pins in, you can. But our test specimen won't be experiencing any side loading today, so it's not needed. Cool. So we can now leave the test specimen in as such. When we go to the software, we can select for it to be preloaded. So I'll pass you off to Eric. The software that interfaces with the MTI is just called Tensile Test. It's sitting right here on the desktop. The, the default settings that it has are sufficient for this test as they're meant for a, the aluminum style test specimens. The only thing you may need to make sure is changed is the cross section is set to rectangular versus circular and that your units are in the proper ones you're looking for. Um, if you're happy with the setup, you can just use this guy if you use these setup conditions and proceed to test. The next screen is just to add a name to the test that you're running. Um, name it whatever you like, anything that is relevant. The max menu is setting the actual dimensions of the cross section. Because we have a rectangular cross section, we have a pre-measured this guy. The units are by default in millimeters as set on the first screen. Make sure to hit enter if you do change the cross section and it will update the cross sectional area. Now to the preloading. As Sean mentioned, it's as simple as hitting preload. You'll see the numbers on the screen here change as it slowly applies a load. Once that graph appears, if we go to the test specimen, you can now see that it's in tension. If you're happy with the setup, uh, the last thing to do is check the speed that it actually tries to displace the specimen at. We found that it was about two millimeters per minute was sufficient because of the material's brittle. It's not going to do it a lot of necking. Once you're happy with everything, hit run. Once the test is completed, uh, the final graph will be spit out, the MTI turns off, and it will actually spit out the end results as far as force and stresses. Um, if you're happy with that, hit return. As you can hear, uh, it uh, unloads the specimen. Um, if the results look okay, hit accept. Numbers look reasonable, hit okay. And then we can print our results by going graph and text. Make sure to do graph and text, it actually spits out this graph and the corresponding numbers associated with it.